Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid. Welcome back to the M62TU Rebuild Project. This is the second to last video in the project. In this video, we are going to replace the um, valley pan gasket, which is underneath the intake manifold. This is technically not part of the whole timing chain guide job, but it's, a, it's a, a, something you should do while you're in there if you've never done it before, because in all likelihood, your valley pan gasket is going to be leaking and you might eventually be seeing a uh, coolant dripping off the back of the engine sort of from where the transmission meets the engine area so that's what i am seeing on this video this vehicle so i figured i might as well change it while i'm in here so let's get started we obviously are in some state of disassembly hopefully you've been watching along with the whole series if you haven't i would definitely suggest you go back and watch the first video in this series so you kind of understand how we got to this place so you had these cables which were going you know down underneath the engine and um, there's a whole segment in one of the videos explaining how I got this off. So it's uh, uh, definitely important. This, you know, we wanna get these out of the way, these electrical harnesses sort of out of the way. Um, these two wires go down to the starter and the oil level sensor. Our next step is gonna be to get the fuel rail off. Now this is already loose because we popped it up and out in a previous video and we took these these accessories off the the front here i'm just gonna spend a, take a second to get things out of the way making a note of kind of how they go i see that where that goes this obviously is a hose that gets tucked we're going to remember that it gets tucked underneath the fuel rail here so let's untuck it kind of set it a little off to the side so guys, it's a little interesting what's going on back here. On my particular model, I can see that this is the uh, the oil separator, the thing that's normally supposed to be sort of inside the, the lower crankcase on the uh, the lower timing cover. On older models of this engine, it, they moved it to back here where I guess it's a little more easily accessible. So that's pretty cool. And it looks like it looks like it's bolted to the back right here. I can feel a fastener down right here. Um, I, I don't know if it's actually bolted to the intake manifold. It feels like it is because that's obviously all that's right there. So that tells me it might come out with the intake manifold and I probably don't need to mess with it. So I think what I'm going to do is remove this line from it because this one is loose. It goes to the valve cover back there. We currently have it off. I'll loosen this line because I'm assuming this goes down somewhere. Not exactly sure where but uh, we'll leave that sort of in place. And I also see that this electrical harness is, is zip tied to the intake manifold here. So I'm gonna cut this zip tie right here so we can always replace that. Oh. Yep, yep. So we'll pull that zip tie out, toss it aside. I'd like to take a minute to thank this week's sponsor, oembimmerparts.com. Whether it comes to the E53 or the E70 X5 series, or the 3 Series E46, or even more modern cars such as the E90 and the F30, this site has all of the most popular parts that you're going to need for the most common repairs. I love the way that it's organized into a few major sections, and these sections are not overrun by a million Chinese sellers with their crappy stuff that you have to scroll through forever to find what you need. It's just the OEM brands of the most popular parts at great prices. And they have fast two-day shipping as well. If you're in the market for BMW parts, please check out OEMBimmerparts.com. All right, I say we get this fuel rail out of here. And I think to do that, I am going to loosen the fuel line from this hard line right here just you know you could you could also loosen it from back here but i think it's a little bit it's a better idea to do it from up here that way the fuel it's harder for the fuel to escape you know what i mean this is a little more this a little higher up in the air so you just you push this black thing in what you do is you push the line forward to take the slack off the spring so that you can push the black part in and Ah, just like that. This, this, the line on the end of this is plugged into the back of the intake manifold. I think I'll just pull it out. Yeah, okay. Let's see, let's see. It looks like the, the power cable for the, that goes down to the alternator runs through this, um, the, the oil rail. 
So I think I'm definitely gonna disconnect it. Should be a 19. Ah, there goes the fuel. So I'm gonna try to stick this up like that. Pull this through. That should allow us to just pick up this fuel rail and get it out of here. You know what? I have a little shut off for that. I'm gonna put that on. This thing right here, best kind of a, a fuel crimp off plier. Works great. I think this is an OTC, but uh, I think Harbor Freight also makes a version of it. It's not as good, but it'll work. There, no more mess. So I think I can sort of manhandle this a little more without worrying. Boom, there it goes. There it comes. Okay, I have immediately found a couple of things. Number one, a bolt of some kind. Some dirt. That's easy. Okay, yeah, I think I'll just leave the rest of that on and we'll just get off these bolts. We got one, two, three, four, five here and another five there. BMW intake manifold bolts are 11 millimeters. We need an extension for that one. Uh, same thing. All right. Are those the only bolts? Yes. Oh, and it looks like a little bit of dust is kind of coming up. So I think I want to hit this with a vacuum real quick. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh wait, I didn't get the last one. Okay, and I can tell that these are gonna wanna fall, so I'm gonna pull them out. And I can see that there's still stuff attached to the back. So I want to figure out what I can do and where I can take something loose. This is, this looks like it's in a grommet. So that's plastic stuck inside a grommet. We got to get it off carefully. Uh, I'm going to try this. I know this doesn't scream careful, but I think if I pull it straight, Ah, uh, yeah, that worked out great. So that's what it was. Just a little guy like that stuck in the back. All right, this should come out. Yay, nice and easy. All right, guys, it looks like I made some mistakes here. This cracked right apart on me. Um, I believe the, 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 the actual tube is down in there, right there. And it looks like this also cracked on me and that one is laying right there as well. So. I am going to have to do something about that. Obviously, it's best to disconnect this whole device from the back of the, v the back of the intake manifold before you do this. And let me give you a, a shot of what those bolts are. They are T30s. And 10s right there. So we we'll want to take those off from the back. Totally possible to do that. And you can just kind of leave that behind sitting up in the air without damaging anything but it does look like they were kind of crusty and rusty anyway and um, looking to break so they probably needed to be replaced anyway so we're going to deal with it so the rest of this job should be super easy we just have these crossover pipes that we're going to pull out we have new o-rings for them we're going to drip some coolant ah, or not Or yes. Oh, nice. Get it all on your face too. Okay. I'm also going to pull out the um, power cable here. Just kind of get it up out of the way. And I'm going to remove the knock sensors, 13s.
Ah, we lost our bolt. There we go. Um, this is a plastic cover on top of a, a metal plate that has a, an impregnated gasket on it. I bought a new plate with you know new gaskets. Supposedly they've upgraded it or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to pull off all these bolts and it looks like this plastic cover is clipped to the plate here and here and there and it doesn't look easy to take off right now but I think that it's going to come out together with the plate and with the metal plate and maybe I'll be able to separate them at that point because I didn't buy a new cover so no new piece of plastic. take this right away. So that's the impregnated gasket like I was saying and the new one we have a new part basically. So let's try not to just drop anything in there at all. I was able to pry the two apart and ew what is that? Ew. Alrighty so I've cleaned this up in the parts washer. Came out fine. It's uh you know good as new. Reusable I think. I see some dirt in the back here and I just kind of want to, I want to get it out of the way carefully. I just don't want to drop anything down in this coolant and stuff, you know? So I'm really not going to go crazy trying to clean up here because, you know, I mean, yes, I, I, I would love to get it perfectly spotless and get all the grease out and, and all that stuff. But to be honest with you, the engine really doesn't care how dirty it is. Only you do. So as long as you're not going to get dirt inside of your cooling system, I think that's what really matters. And we want to get it, obviously, we want to get the gasket area nice and clean. And then let me scrape just a couple of these areas. I can see corrosion here. <clears throat> these, these carbide scrapers, by the way, are really great. Titan tools. Throw a link in the description. Worked really well for scraping off the um, water pump gasket, you know, paper gaskets that kind of get stuck on. Worked super well for that. I probably should have bought the smaller one as well. I think I will. They make a, they make one that's slightly narrower, and I see where that could come in handy sometimes. So here is the new part and. Immediately I can tell the gasket is a lot thicker. The other one apparently had just like an applied RTV gasket. This one is a Viton. So that's pretty cool. So they've upgraded it. Awesome. Let's see, that should go that way. And this should snap right onto it. Let's hook it on one side. Okay, cool. And we can just place that on. So right here, it looks like these were um, like little hold downs for, uh, they were little zip tie thingies <laughs> that are stuck into the cover. Probably to hold down the, um, the power cable, but I'm not gonna put that back. So the, um, the stubby actually comes with a mode, uh, you know, it comes with one, two, three, three being the most power. And then this mode, is kind of the fastener rundown mode where you can just run it down and it'll stop when it gets to the first uh, when it when it meets resistance like this see isn't that cool i've never used it super super handy i think we're going to just do a center out pattern i did not look this up somebody can correct me if it's wrong but it's not going to be too critical. And I'm just doing 10 newton meters because again, these are M6 bolts. So I do find that I need to run them down a lot more than what they were. So, I mean, that, that definitely doesn't over tighten anything. It also doesn't bring us near to where we should be. So there's going to be a little bit of ratcheting involved here. All right, here's the deal. 
I, um, I can see that, despite my best efforts, some schmutz has gotten down inside the valves here. It's okay, I'm just gonna blow them out with some compressed air. So, moral of the story is, make sure you have compressed air for this. Incidentally, you see this little hole right back here? That's where the coolant leaks out from and leaks down to uh, the, the back of the engine right there. So, <laughs> that's that. All right, guys, I just spent some time uh, wiping off the, the surface of the, um, where the intake manifold will sit on the cylinder heads. And now we are going to tackle these O-rings in the back here, get them replaced. I'm gonna get this cleaned out. Alrighty, I have cleaned up the surface inside here. Now we gotta replace these O-rings because we got new ones. They weren't all hard and cracked, so that's good. All right, new O-rings. We'll do one at a time. Cool. This whole pipe in the back here, right here, it actually bolts on to the back of the cylinder heads. And there are gaskets for it, and I bought them because uh, I was thinking I was gonna change them. There's also some O-rings um, sort of on the back there. You'll figure out which part they go to. Um, I don't think I'm gonna change them <laughs> just because it looks like a pain in the ass. And I, I don't know for sure it's leaking from there. You know, it could be leaking from anything. It, what could have been leaking was the uh, O-rings in the back there. They were kind of chewed up a little bit. Um, it could have been this valley pan gasket. It could have been one of these O-rings. I don't really know. And this is not really hard to get back to, like to, you know, to, to get the engine back to this state. Not that, not that big a deal. Uh, maybe with the wiring harness and the connectors down below, maybe that's a big deal. But um, I think I'm just gonna chance it. I really, I, I just, I think that it's, uh, it's going to be too much of a pain in the ass to try to change these right now. So I'm going to skip it, but uh, to each their own. All right, guys. Now we need to fix our mistake, or I need to fix my mistake, of these, um, cable, these lines right here. Now this was coming out of this hole down here. I kind of reached down and pulled it, pulled it out. And this one, I believe, is just... So what, what it is, is these both, both of these lines go down to... Um, a hard line right here that then bolts to the side to the, the bottom oil pan. So they're just oil drain tubes. Obviously, the oil uh, separator, that's going to drain down to, to the uh, oil pan. So the hard line is actually right down here. You can feel it. And this is just slipped onto it. Now, unfortunately, it's, it's, uh, it's got one of those crimpers on it. It's crimped to the hard line, so it's a pain it's going to be a pain in the butt and the other line i believe is yeah there is a ring clamp holding it on and i think that's just a normal small bmw one so i can get that with my my uh six millimeter flexible six millimeter this guy it flexes super handy huh, yeah i got on it oh this this flexible thing is just it's key to doing this because if you had a straight one it would sort of be like that I, I suppose you could do it you can do it with a ratchet six millimeter I think that's loose this hose is definitely disintegrated quite a bit and it's not very long it's a very short length of hose right here so it's uh, not going to be too difficult to replace I think the biggest problem is that it's not substantial enough to like grab. If I try to grab it with some needle nose here, I think I'm just gonna pull it apart. I can try that. Let's see if I can get a lot of it. See, it just kind of crumbled. It's just, uh, has no integrity. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a little sliver down here now. Let's see if I can get the clamp off. Yep. 
So there's that clamp. I think maybe it's just going to be easier to slice it or something with a razor knife. That's probably what I'll do. I want to try this one more time. Okay. Well, I'll get it out of there. So guys, it has been another five days. I went and I ordered some parts. They're here, so let's go through them. Yeah, so I was looking around on eBay for, uh, you know, this tube and I found a seller who just does a whole kit, you know, all the all the components for like $40. This is the little tube right here that um, I was pulling out with the needle nose pliers. I did manage to get it all the way out off of the uh, the drain line that goes back to the dipstick or goes back to the oil pan. So I did that and then from the same seller, I bought a new set of intake manifold gaskets as well as gaskets for um, these two things here. So this, the throttle body attaches to the um, intake manifold here. There's a gasket here and the same thing. This is the whole oil separator plate that also attaches with a gasket. So I will, I'm just going to replace all this stuff and refurbish it. So let's do that. <sighs> Has anybody else picked up on the fact that this thing is just keeps on turning into more and more and more of a project? Hopefully we're getting to the other side of it. This thing is like dirtier than I expected it to be. Ah, these T30s. Oh, good. So I think, I think I found a new project car. I'll keep it a secret for now, but I now have some motivation to really finish this thing. Is there another one? There's another one. Yeah, just a, just a little cover plate. I'm not sure why that's made detachable. Mm, look at that. Yeah, no idea why that's made detachable. <clears throat> Lots of oil inside the intake, just like uh, all BMWs that have this kind of a oil separation system. Quite ineffective, I suppose. I mean, if the thing was working, shouldn't it separate all the oil and return it to the pan? This, I think, is why people like to do catch cans which you can do with this car. Just route the, uh, route the exhaust gases out to a catch can. Of course, you gotta have a, um, a um, PCV valve. Looks like that thing was toast. I didn't pay attention to which one was which. Are they the same? Oh, I think that's for the back. Yep. So they are not the same. Boom, there we go. Not much oil residue, really not much. I didn't look up a torque spec, but I'm just guessing 10 newton meters. Cool. Ah, do we need to? I don't think we need to replace it, I mean. Gasket looks good. Still supple, still pliable, still sticking out. Definitely gonna seal. I don't think we need a new one. I know I should clean it up. I know, but uh, I'm in a little bit of a hurry now. This one's definitely 10. So the whole oil separator, this is kind of interesting. So <clears throat> these tubes, for some reason, were clipped onto these things here, onto the, onto the plastic. I don't really know why, because um, there should be vacuum on this system the whole time. And, you know, vacuum sucks the hose on. It doesn't pop the hose off. So I'm a little confused why they thought it was necessary. Maybe just to physically hold it on there. Um, but it's, in my view, unnecessary. I will try to replace them if I can, but I don't think it's going to be critical. Let's get these hose clamps off because we'll reuse those. Okay. Hose clamp for the end of that. The hose clamp for this one is somewhere. Are these the same? Let's check it out. They are shaped a little differently. 
So this one has a little bend in it. I'm guessing that's for that right there. So this one looks like it goes there. So that's the bottom. And this one, boom, is the top. So it goes like that. So we get an oil separator. So it goes like this. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that. Now we need to transfer over our hose clamps. Ideal. They don't seem like BMW hose clamps at all. Ideal, that's a Home Depot brand, I think. So I guess somebody did something to this system before, but it certainly wasn't me. So this should go like this, and that goes there, and that's the hose clamp for it. Boom, like that. Okay. And this is gonna go where? Right here, right there. Good stuff. Put this hose clamp here. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, now we need to take this whole plate off or we'll replace the gasket. Mm. So I guess this has the diaphragm in it. I didn't get a new one of these. I'm now realizing, maybe I should have. I don't know how prone to failure these diaphragms are, but it's not too hard to replace if we need to later on. I am definitely not waiting for more parts. <laughs> too much waiting on this job. Interesting, a lot of garbage back here. A lot of dust from the intake. It's not too good, actually. Should be an air filter going on here in this car. Need to take a look at that. Yeah, these gaskets were definitely hard, cracked, needed to be replaced. Actually, this one here was for that. What else, what else we got? We got the short tube and we got the long tube. The long tube kind of goes here. And I did save this little clamp because it kind of seems like it's reusable. Okay, we need... Let's see if these pliers will do the trick. Definitely squeeze it together, but I don't know if they'll push the clip down. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think that's it. So that one's uh, nice and sort of reusable. So we'll reuse it. And then the short guy, this one feels more substantial than the last one, a lot more. Okay, what did it have? It had this little, had a little clamp on it. I have those. Maybe this is the one. This might be the one. Yeah. Let's give it a squeeze. I don't think that's coming off. Now, of course, <laughs> This clip from on, from on the other side is down on the tube. I'm really not gonna be able to reach back there and clip it back on, nor am I really gonna be able to get one on here. May, maybe I can, but that, that pliers that I have is too long. It's not gonna fit back there. So I'm not gonna connect it. I'm not gonna crimp it on these bottom ones. I'm just gonna leave it because I think it's gonna be fine. I suppose these might just be to sort of hold this on to keep it from falling off during installation or something. I don't know. Now these, I think, I believe these are metal impregnated rubber or, you know, rubber over molded on metal, I should say. 
because you can bend them back. So yeah, it's not all hard and crusty. It's just metal on the inside. When you're doing this, don't crack any of the plastic. Ah, okay. There's that a nest of some kind. See, there's a hole right here. So you don't want the rubber to be on that side. Alrighty, that is one intake manifold refurbished as best we can. So to review this system, um, this connects to the, uh, the valve cover and that's where the blow by gases come from. They kind of come travel through here into the chamber here and those gases spin around and around and the oil condenses on the, the surface here and that collects and drains back down to the oil pan through this tube. And then the gases come up through the center here, come over here around and through here. And there's a rubber diaphragm in here, which kind of regulates the amount of vacuum that's applied to this system. And of course, it looks like some oil might condense in there and drain back. So there's a, another little drain here that also connects down here to the, the drain tube. So yeah, that's it. That's the whole system. All right, guys, let's get these coolant crossover tubes reinstalled. I just dipped them in some of the old coolant. Kind of lube them up a little bit. Okay. I am still confident in my decision not to replace the gaskets on this crossover pipe right here where it connects to the cylinder head. I put my mirror back there, lighted mirror, and just inspected around. I didn't see any traces of coolant leaking down or whatever, so... I'm all right with this decision. So yeah, don't forget to install your knock sensors. <laughs> don't often use a wrench. Also, <laughs> don't forget your power cable. That guy runs down underneath these right here. And there were supposed to be those uh, Christmas tree fasteners actually here. There were supposed to be those uh, sort of what I call a Christmas tree zip tie kind of thing. Um, let's take these out. I'll put them back in later. I believe I do have those zip ties. Why else did I buy them? A long time ago. Make sure that you use some flush cutting pliers on your zip ties so that you don't slice your hand open next time you brush up against them. I put some silicone paste on the ends of the tubes this time so they slip in the O-rings easier. And if you see in the back there, you can see how the oil separator has been removed from the intake manifold. And it's the small tube is slipped down onto the oil drain line already. And now you can see I'm grabbing that longer tube and I put it back in the hole where it's supposed to be. And now I can just slip the intake manifold down over top of the bolts so much easier uh, it was actually a real pain in the ass to put this thing you know in with the oil separator still attached because you had to reach back there and shove the, the that short line on and it's just too it was too difficult to get it on so this is the easier way and you can see here i've uh, reinstalled the power cable and now i'm slipping the brake booster hose back into the the grommet on the back of the intake manifold just pops right in this has not been a good night for audio. Might have to do a lot of overdubbing here. All right, let's get these, uh, let's get this guy bolted to the back of the intake manifold without dropping it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I've got the other one in my hand. There we go. Oh yeah, I forgot I had this on, on that mode. Where it just kind of runs it down. These should be 15 Newton meters, M7 bolts.
Okay, one thing I didn't do is connect that small tube uh, to the oil drain tube as well. Here I'm just putting these tubes sort of back into place. And then I realized that this tube should not be connected yet because it interferes with reinstalling the fuel rail. As you can see, I had to lift it up there. And you're just popping the fuel injectors back into place and connecting up the fuel line. Make sure you give it a tug to make sure that it's clipped on. And I'm removing that little clamp that was on it. Let's put the clamp on that. All right, now we can put these back where they're supposed to go. You definitely want to get this, this uh, thing bolted on here, the, this tube bolted down before you put this on because it kind of is in the way. Now I'm thinking that this goes under here. Yeah, I think so. It might even go under here. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, that kind of looks right, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. All right, well, I think this is a good place to end the video on changing the uh, valley pan gasket. And we will come back in the next video and finish up reinstalling the, uh, the rest of the engine. So that does it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one, the final one where we're gonna finish putting the car back together and finally start it and get it back on the road. So stay tuned for that. I'm the 50s kid, thanks a lot for watching.